let's now try to understand uh, basically what the relative atomic mass relative molecular mass and relative formula mass are so to start with relative atomic mass which is denoted as RAM which is relative atomic mass so how do we define the relative atomic mass so the relative atomic mass of an element is defined to be the weighted average of the masses of the isotopes so the weighted average of the masses of the isotopes in the naturally occurring element relative to the mass of an atom of the carbon 12 isotope which is taken to be a 12 so when you get to find an average of the masses of the isotopes of the element that are occurring naturally and then relative to the mass of an atom of a carbon 12 isotope basically what you get is a relative atomic mass so relative implies you're comparing against okay so you compare the weighted average masses of the isotopes in the naturally occurring element so it should be natural naturally occurring element relative to a mass relative to the mass of atom of carbon 12 isotope so that is what we call the relative atomic mass so without complicating things further i would want to make a comment to say when you look at the periodic table when you look at uh, your oxygen for example you can use it as an example or we can use uh, we can use both oxygen and carbon so let's say on top you'll be able to see 15.994 of course on some periodic table you get to 16 for but it's exactly 15 point something and then on the bottom you have uh, 8 so that value that you're seeing on top is what we call the relative atomic mass in simplicity so if you look at carbon it is 12.01 and then we have a 6 so basically that is the relative atomic mass of what of our carbon so one thing that I would want you to understand again is the fact that when you talk about a mass of an atom, the mass of a single atom is just too small. Okay? An atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. So it is just too small. It is impossible for us to put it on a scale and weigh it. Okay? So therefore, atomic masses are defined in terms of uh, what we call the atomic mass unit. So we have what we call the atomic mass unit. Those are the units that we're going to be using whenever we're talking about uh, atoms. So we use what we call the atomic mass unit. Usually denoted using a small letter U. So when you say it to you, it means two atomic mass unit. Okay. So one atomic mass unit for your information is basically equivalent to one point one point let me write that better one point six six times ten to the power negative twenty seven kilograms so that is an atomic mass unit so it is very difficult for some people to remember this value but what i usually emphasize is uh, you can think of it in this way i believe you've been working with avogadro's constant which is six point 0 to 2 times 10 to the power 23 for quite some time now so 1 over the Avogadro's constant in grams is equal to 1 atomic mass unit so if you get to perform the calculation there you are dividing the 6.022 times 10 raised to the power 23 divide that into a one so the answer that i'm getting is 1.66 times 10 to the power negative 24 grams so now you know that for you to move from grams to kilograms you need to divide by a thousand 
So dividing by a thousand, we imply you get to to, to to subtract three. So if you subtract a three from the power, it will become negative twenty-seven, which we have in our kilograms there. So I don't know which one is easier for you to remember. Either you work with uh, one over Avogadro's constant to be equal to a gram of one at or one atomic mass unit, or you just master this constant. But usually in your assessments it will be given, so no need of you worrying much about it. Now what what about if you talk about what we are calling the relative molecular mass? What gets to come to your mind? What is the relative atomic mass or relative molecular mass, which is the mid one? Since we've already talked about the relative atomic mass, which is shown on our periodic table, how do we get to define the relative molecular mass? So we can basically talk about the relative molecular mass to be the summation. It is the sum of the relative atomic masses. So what we are from talking about. So the summation of the relative atomic masses of the atoms in a given molecule. So what is what the relative molecular mass is? So what that means if you are given carbon dioxide molecule, and then they ask you to find the relative molecular mass. It implies you need to add, to sum up the relative atomic masses of the atoms. Okay, so the simple calculation is, we have two atoms of oxygen. We have one atom of carbon. So oxygen, if you go to your periodic table, we are saying summation of relative atomic masses. Go to your periodic table, you'll find something like 15.994. Look at carbon, 12.01. So the key aspect is being able to identify how many atoms are present in a molecule and then multiplying against their relative atomic mass. And then you get to sum up the results. So multiply what is on top. 2 times 15 points. 15.994. And then plus... I'll do that again. 2 times 15.994 plus 12.01. So the answer is uh, ah, 2 times 15.994 plus 12.01. So the answer is 43.998. So units used grams per mole. So basically that is our relative molecular mass. So when you're talking about the relative formula mass on the other hand, we can use the same f definition. We can just say the relative formula mass is basically the summation of the relative atomic masses of the atoms in a given formula of a substance or compound. So all the same. So if I give you a formula, let's say calcium hydroxide. So what you're going to find as a summation of the relative atomic masses of all these atoms is what we are calling the relative formula mass. So it will involve you recognizing and understanding the use of the subscripts. So in this case, these two will multiply to everything inside. So that means that we have calcium plus two oxygen plus two hydrogens so substitute their values from the periodic table so check for the relative atomic mass of calcium substitute for oxygen and hydrogen as well so that summation that you're having is what we are calling now the relative formula mass now just one more example that i can mention of that you need to understand is uh let's say we have magnesium and then nitrate so this one is looks a bit tricky and students usually get to make mistakes so here it will be magnesium now we have the one there for nitrogen so it will be two nitrogens and then two times the three for the oxygen it will be six so we have six oxygen atoms so substitute there and then add the answers what you are going to get is a relative formula mass of magnesium nitrate so I believe you now understand what the relative atomic mass is, the relative molecular mass, the relative formula mass, and how to convert from atomic mass unit to a gram 
or kilograms. So in the next tutorial, we're going to understand how we get to determine the relative atomic mass, relative atomic mass calculations from the isotopes. Okay, let's say you're given uh, carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14, and then they ask you to find the relative atomic mass because what we see on the periodic table is the relative atomic mass, but there are atoms that exist in more than one form, in the natural uh, form. So we'll try to understand how we get to perform those calculations.